All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to what is my first ever online only class. Um, you will be able to see my giant head floating around in the recording, but right now it wasn't playing nice with Discord. So you'll just have to be happy that we've got this cool Sailor Moon thing going on here that I did earlier today. Um, this is anatomy class, or it will be anatomy class. You guys are here to learn how to draw the human figure, yes? yes. Cool. So that's what we're going to do then. Uh, we've got a lot of information up on the Canvas course right now. Hopefully all of you have been able to browse and see everything on there. Mostly I'm going to use the announcements to let you know something has changed. And also the module section I have pre-made, and I will go ahead and slide this over here. I have pre-made a whole bunch of modules with a whole lot of stuff which aren't published except for the very first one. Okay, so The very first one has a technology poll just so that I could figure out who is and isn't drawing digitally. Uh, by the way, if you do not want to draw digitally or have never done it before, you don't have to. In this course, you can do your drawings traditionally on paper, newsprint and charcoal if you want to, whatever you're comfortable with. I will, however, have to see them. So if you are drawing traditionally, please have a camera or a scanner or know how to do that so that you can give me your drawings. Other than that, I don't really care if you use traditional drawing tools or not. Okay. Uh, we do have articles here, though. Um, traditional drawing tools, which are discussed by Proco, which we will be using a lot. This is the Proco uh, website. I don't know why he's such a silly boy, but he's got him and some other figure drawing instructors in an Iron Man setup right now. Uh, if you don't know who he is, uh, he's a YouTube personality who has done lots and lots of lessons on how to draw the human figure. His website's very annoying, though. Sorry about that. And all of the stuff that he teaches is identical to what I learned and also what I was going to do lecture videos on myself. So we're going to use his videos first, then I'm going to demonstrate second and do question and answer as well as um, maybe draw along with me if you're able to do that. If you're not, you can always watch the recording back and draw along. Um, and we're going to go through the entire body bit by bit and learn how to draw all the little fiddly bits. Sound good? Cool. Here is the basic rundown of what we're going to learn week by week, just really quick. Um, this week, we're just going to all learn how to get along online and be okay with that. Uh, I do have that technology poll. Just fill that out. That's going to serve the purpose of attendance, and I'm not going to take attendance after that, really. I just want to know who's active, who's actually succeeded in using all of these uh, various online tools that we've got at our disposal, and also give me an idea about who's using what programs in case um, I need to switch the one that I'm using or something. Uh, then we've got a few articles of information here, and then finally down here, an assignment. So you're only ever going to have one assignment per week, and it's going to be basically the same assignment every week. It's going to be, draw the thing that I taught you how to draw. That's it, okay? How much of it? As much as you can, okay? I'm reluctant to put a number limit on that because I would rather you do a good job than do 30 bad jobs, if you get my meaning. Okay, and I don't know what your drawing ability is necessarily, so it might be completely burdensome to say you have to draw this thing that I told you how to draw 30 times, 50 times, 100 times, whatever. And then some of you might be yawning and going, boy, this is easy. Um, I'm not learning anything. So I'm not co too concerned with the number, but I want you to draw as much as you can, especially if you want to get a lot out of the course. And I want to see what it was that you drew this week. I may start to harass you if I get like one drawing. Yeah, I'm probably going to harass you if you give me like one drawing. In fact, if you give me under a dozen, then I'm going to tell you, you're definitely taking it the easy way. You're not going to learn very much. You do need to draw more than like 12 or something like that. But quality really matters. If I see that you've labored over a drawing and really, really tried, that matters compared to just kind of chicken scratching out a whole bunch of different barely understandable drawings. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes. Yeah. So generally that's how I grade this course in particular is that 
I'm not going to be super harsh with your points because it's difficult to draw a human being. It's a big undertaking anyway. You need a lot of practice. We all know this. Why should I give you a C for trying your heart out and not being perfect? I don't want to do that. So whatever you turn in week to week, basically I'm going to give you all the points that you would get for that. But I'm going to give you a lot of feedback and that feedback might be you're being too lazy or you're trying too hard or I don't see enough here. Okay, That'll be basically how it goes. But every week you're going to have essentially that same assignment. I might pepper in little things here and there where I want you to do it a specific way, but it'll be apparent on the assignment when that happens. Okay? Uh, any questions about that general policy? Cool. Uh, here is the first assignment just for a example. This one is different because I'm telling you about all my preferences and what you should do. And also the thing that I want you to give me is just anything that you think is appropriate to help me gauge how, um, how good you are at drawing the human figure already. Okay. So some of you may have taken courses before. Some of you may have never taken a course. Some of you may have never drawn digitally. Some of you may have done a lot of that. Give me something that gives me an idea of how much help you're going to need or how much you already know. Uh, that way, I can not only see one, that you can use the submission forms on uh, Canvas to turn in a file, but two, how much I should give you advice or in, in the class in general, how much basic drawing advice you're going to need, how many um, extra uh, tutorials you might need about things that are fundamental to drawing the human figure that aren't just anatomy um, and how much time I should spend on that stuff. Okay? In these references, are these new drawings that we should make or older ones that we've had? These ones can be older ones. Okay. So just anything that you've already got. If you really want to and you don't have anything else to do this week and you want to make some new ones, go ahead and make some new ones. But seeing older stuff not too old of course is going to be just fine it's just a gauge where you're at okay. okay and that could be three like uh online or paper drawing. right i i always need a file but i don't care how you made the thing originally just so long as i can clearly see it okay to that end um just a little bit of advice if you are going to photograph your work like you have live real stuff in front of you and you, you need to take a picture, just make sure that you're taking the picture straight across at the paper and that you've lit your environment very well. That will help a lot. Uh, most smartphones are capable of taking blur-free photographs even by hand, even if you've got shaky hands. But the difference between taking it at, at a crazy angle where you just put it on your desk and just held up your phone and actually moving the camera into a perpendicular line with the paper and then turning on all the lights that's a big difference so just make sure you're doing that if i have any trouble with what you're turning in i'll let you know though okay all righty then let's take a quick look at these links that i put in the discord channel so first we were looking at proco there's a lot of stuff on proco tons and tons and tons if that's overwhelming ignore it I'm going to show you which ones you should pay attention to week by week. Okay? If this is not overwhelming to you, go nuts and look at as much as you want, but remember that we are focusing on a certain thing every week and that is particularly what I'm going to want to see. So if we are on, for instance, a leg week and you're drawing the whole body with an emphasis on the face and hand, I'm going to be thinking like, uh, are you paying any attention? Are you trying to learn the thing that we're trying to learn right now. So just keep that in mind. Okay. Um, the reason I chose Proko besides the fact that he's got a really great library is because he does a certain kind of figure drawing uh, called constructive figurative arts, which I was taught by my instructor when I went to school. And his website is this one, the figuredrawing.info. And he's the author of this book. I have and you'll only see this on the playback because I can't get my webcam to work. I have a, my version of this book, Figure Drawing uh, Design and Invention, from way back, and it's fantastic. And if you go to the website, you can see examples of his work as well. Um, the emphasis here is on making it as three-dimensional and plausible as possible, 
and using the muscular forms in a simplistic way to emphasize whatever it is you're doing with the figure. So, <clears throat> excuse me, the reason this is a, a good approach is because it lends itself towards um, drawing from imagination because you end up memorizing the muscular shapes and the skeletal, skeletal deformation and all the things that you need to make a plausible figure. You end up memorizing that to a degree that even without a person in front of you, you can draw the figure pretty easily. And then also if you have to make a creature, such as in production design, you can elongate certain parts, you can emphasize muscles more, you can add and take away fat, you can change the gender, you can add animal parts. That sort of creative concept art like drawing and painting is what is really good for this approach. So it's sort of a, a fundamental way to draw anything from any angle, but also a way to plausibly draw things that maybe aren't so familiar anymore, like a bat wing arm or you know um, a turtle shell on your back or something like that. Does that make sense? Okay. So it's a little different than just drawing fine art drawings. We're not going to emphasize the beauty so much all the time. We're going to emphasize the accuracy. So to that end, make sure that you're familiar with basic three-dimensional drawing fundamentals. And if you're not, that's definitely what I'll be demoing first. Um, drawing in perspective is great, and that's where that stuff begins. But really, we're more like drawing things that are just turning three-dimensionally rather than going to a vanishing point on a horizon line all the time. There are too many pieces of the body going at too many angles to be able to use the formal perspective drawing rules. So if you're not familiar with that stuff, that'll certainly be what I start showing you guys first. Okay. Any questions about that so far? No? Nope. Cool. I want to see in his image gallery if there's anything worth looking at here. I mean, his work is always worth looking at. But So these uh, here, if you're not familiar with this, um, these are gesture drawings, and sometimes they're, they're short study drawings. But this is what we're going to aim to be able to do towards the middle, maybe the end of the class. And although these look easy, they're deceptive because you don't take very much time to do these at all. You might take 30 seconds to a minute. And they have in them all of the important bits of information that you would need to continue drawing this figure even without the model there. So some of the things that I can notice are we have a basic pinch and stretch on the torso. We've got center lines that are marked out here. This appears to be the center line of the back, I believe, between the scapula. We've got a shoulder line along with attachment points. Um, we've got wrapping lines, such as around the thighs, that show us which direction in space the thigh is going. We've got contact points with the ground, such as on the foot and the hand over here. We've got indications of what the hand is doing without a whole lot of detail. This stuff is hard to do quickly, and it requires that you first be very familiar with the more formal um, shape and deformation of all the pieces of the body before you can really just kind of crank one of these things out, which is almost like a stick figure. I would like to stop viewing this now. How do I stop there? OK, I just click on it. Um, Here's an example of a, of a longer form one. This was probably still just a couple of minutes, maybe a few minutes. Um, and you can see that not all of the figure is there, but enough of the figure is there that you can really understand what's happening. So we're going to try to, in general, approach the figure first from looking at a photograph, looking at a, um, a model, and drawing carefully what we see, checking the proportions, making sure that everything's accurate, and slowly move towards more representational ways of, of drawing the figure. Because doing things fast is um, it's stressful. It relies on your already understood mental library of the human figure. So I don't want to force you guys to do that too fast. But we are going to try to do faster, more gestural drawings, especially later on in the quarter. Okay. Let's see if we got a few more. Here's some nice ones. You can tell of the same model in different positions. Let's see what else we got. 
Here's a couple, one where it looks like there was a lot more time, one that looks like there was less. This appears to be done in either digital sumi pen or maybe uh, charcoal or something. And this page that we're looking at right now, this is the gesture drawing page. This is not the one that has any completed formalized drawings. So we can look at the other sections for that. Um, let's look at the anatomy section, why not? But the construction one's probably going to be very interesting. So this is the kind of thing that you get from his book where these are the different muscle groups of the upper and lower arm color-coded with shortcut shapes being described. That will be something that we do a lot and in fact some of this stuff like the square shape of the wrist is a particular shortcut that's very very useful because it has some external uh, points on the body that you can see very easily. If you take your fingers and grip your wrist, um, you're going to feel a few bumps. And one of those bumps, right, the, the knot on the pinky side of your wrist, is the end point of a bone. Okay? And if you look at your wrist as you rotate your palm, palm face down and palm face up, and hold on to your forearm, you're going to feel two bones rotating around in your forearm. It's important to know what those bones are where they attach to, what they're doing, and then what muscles are attaching to those bones to make your arm be able to do that. Once you get enough of a sort of mental library of that, remembering it becomes trivial and it becomes just another kind of tool that you're using to draw whatever you want. Okay, This is a pretty tall order though. There's a lot to know. There's a lot to look at. You can see on this image that I brought up, the right hand um, smaller image has more architectural kind of blocky shapes. And those are all the layers of muscle that are on the figure in the left. Um, so it's a tall order to understand all of this stuff, but this class is really just gonna kind of serve as a primer and introduction to that stuff. You definitely do have to do years of drawing study to get very good at this. And so don't beat yourself up if you don't understand it right away, if your drawings don't look very nice right away. It, it would be surprising to me if this took more or less than like three years at least of diligent study for a person to go from not understanding these concepts to fully understanding them. So go easy on yourself, but do work hard and do a lot of practice. These are really great examples. Cool. Let's look at the construction image gallery because this should be interesting. Let's see, how about that one? So this is cool. I don't know what the thing in the, on the top of this figure is. It looks pretty funny. I think he was talking about not copying um, silhouette. So one of the ways we learn to draw early on sometimes is copy a silhouette shape. And once we get into constructive figure drawing, we need to stop doing that. Instead, we're looking at three-dimensional shapes that are turning on the page and we need to draw them and through things as if it's an x-ray whereas if you just kind of trace the outline it's pretty inaccurate it doesn't build up a mental library of understanding it isn't able to easily be manipulated and you really don't learn very much from doing it so by contrast this figure here is almost just made up of boxes and tubes but it's pretty recognizable i can tell what's going on from it and you could always soften out those transitions to get a real figure so that's kind of the idea it's so another example of the same thing. Clearly see a head, arms, and then the back and butt are kind of square, but really anatomically they are kind of square. So this is just kind of using a very strict um, three-dimensional shape, a box, and sometimes cylinders, maybe an egg here or there, to place and carefully arrange the figure before going into all the smaller details. This is a typical one. We'll start doing these around uh, maybe the fourth or fifth week where we've got a kind of bean torso and tube arms and legs along with a Loomis head. Uh, Andrew Loomis is another one. I didn't link to it, but we'll get a lot from him um, where all of the three dimensional parts of the body are now clearly visible, clearly oriented with their proper proportions. And there's no anatomical detail really yet. Um, that's going to be a good hallmark of how we're doing. There's more examples of that. It looks a little grotesque sometimes to build, uh, build a person like this as if they're like an android with half their meat missing, but it's a very useful thing to do. Yep. Oh. 
here's some basic figures that just have um, two eggs placed along with sticks so these would probably be like 30 second drawings but they're also very three-dimensional very anatomical and you could build on top of them and they have a lot of the the physical landmarks that we're going to end up learning to recognize and use in our drawings as well let's just see if there's anything else I want to do uh, yeah let's look at a long pose probably gonna have a lot more detail okay so there's a good one and here's a clothed figure all that stuff that we've been seeing is underneath the surface. You can kind of see it evident in this one. But building up in these layers means that you have a very, very confident physical presence of the, the, the figure that you've drawn by the time you get to those later stages. Something that happens in student and amateur work all the time is that the details overpower the primary forms in that you can't tell what's going on anymore. Um, and what I mean by that is that these wrapping lines, like these shading lines on her shin, are following the three-dimensional shape of that original tube that he put down, which means that they're all supporting an idea rather than fighting with each other. Um, it's maybe a little bit mean to pick on this movie, but if you guys remember the Transformers series, especially the very first movie, the details of those robots overwhelm the idea of what a robot is to where they just look like metal bits flying through space. We don't want our drawings to do that. We want to make sure that any details are in support of an idea and don't conflict with it. And head drawing, let's see. We'll almost certainly see Loomis heads here. Oh, not as much, but yeah. So here's a really lengthy breakdown of lots of different ideas. I think he used to do this sort of drawing like over the course of an hour, hour and a half while explaining a bunch of things to the point where some of it's not even visible anymore, but it's a good example of the way we're going to try to think. It's a really solid three-dimensionally placed head. We're going to use a, uh, the Loomis method of drawing heads because it's really simple, really easy to grasp. It's not the most accurate, but you can use it as a stepping stone to building your own understanding of how to draw the head. Um, I find that it's a really good way to start out. There we go. Some really nice ones. Okay. Any questions about that stuff? Let me check the chat here. Okay. Advice about how to use your microphone, that's good to know. Anybody got any questions? So are skills will be able to build up uh, course? Absolutely. If they didn't, then I would be doing a very bad job. <laughs> yeah, I what I expect typically is that some people are going to join the course with some ability to draw the figure comfortably. Some people won't. Some people will have never seriously tried to draw the human figure before. Some people will have. Um, some people will have instruction that goes completely opposite of what my advice is going to be. Some people will have gotten instruction that's very similar. Everyone has a different ability and a different understanding. Um, I'm just trying to explain the reason why we're going to approach it this way is because it lends itself towards production art and imaginative drawing. But is it the only way to draw the figure? No, of course not. But I want you guys to understand anatomy in particular, because that's the point of this class. I've drawn this guy. This guy's really fun. He has uh, tattoos and subdermal implants all over his body. Cool. All right. So that would be a little overview of what Proco is, of what the book that you can get if you want to get it. Um, I recommend it because it's really, really useful. Um, and also he's been updating it steadily over like the past 20 years. I have a very old version with lots of dog ears and um, uh, sticky notes inside of it, but it's helpful for me for a really solid reminder. Um, the last of the links that I provided in the Discord chat was uh, Quick Poses. Uh, quick Poses is one of the tools we're going to use to very quickly uh, and I don't think I can hit go because I'm going to put this on YouTube and they might get mad at me, so I'm not going to hit go. Uh, but we're going to use this to look at and draw um, the human figure. There are naked people in here, so if that bothers you, I think you can turn that off right here. We've got clothing, nude and partially nude, um, clothes and costumes if you want to. Because we're an anatomy class, draw naked people if you can 
if you can manage to. If you're really super uncomfortable, partially nude is fine, or at least clothing that's not super elaborate. I just wouldn't do the costumes one because then the clothing is the point, not the person is the point. Um, there are lots of references online if you need something other than this in which the person is essentially wearing a leotard or a bodysuit and that's fine as long as we can see where they're flexing as long as we can see what the bulges of muscle and skeletal structure are doing that's all we really care about um, but with that said you can specify on this a whole lot of different stuff the type of pose such as face hands feet animals and landscape even I've never used that um, feature but it's there or whole body pose, gender if you want to, level of clothing, um, how long each pose is going to be, start slow, not fast, and how many you want to draw, and whether or not you want the images upside down, which is a funny thing. Um, if you want to really try to just draw what is on screen, drawing it upside down can sometimes um, break your brain a little bit and prevent you from drawing with symbol language instead of drawing what your eyeballs are telling you. And then you just hit start at the end and the screen will change and you can draw however you want to. Okay. Cool. In, uh, in my last class, it was intro to drawing. Mm -hmm. um, the, one of the projects was we had to draw a man and a woman naked. And I wound up just drawing, I found images that were like them facing away. I was like, that's more comfortable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes it can be a little bit weird, but really, it's just bodies. Everybody's got a body. Um, we're here basically to understand what's going on and kind of appreciate that it's a really cool physical machine, your body. Um, just make sure that you get your reference from a place that's not like pornographic or something like that. Although, just because I'm, I'm here to help you. Some of my friends have said that that's the best place for references. I've never used it. I think that's far too distracting. But they said, oh yeah, they're bending their bodies in all sorts of ways. And I go, ah, da, 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 da. okay, I don't care. No, thank you. But some of my friends swear by it. So I thought I'd just report that to you. Um, anyway, that's the basic info for the class. That's kind of how we're going to progress. Did I go through, I don't think I went through the sequence in its entirety. So let's look at modules real quick. Um, we're going to do heavier... Oh, yes. That last, uh, that last uh, thing that we have to send in, uh, how many drawings should we send, or as many as we can? Not as many as you can, because we do have a limit on size in this um, course. I may open up my um, Google Drive for you guys to drop things into if we overrun that limit too quickly. I think it's only one gigabyte is our storage limit. So for this one, um, and I have notes down here about how large the, the files should be to be reasonable. Give me some good examples. Make sure they're, they're curated examples, like pick the best ones, but don't just give me one and don't give me 20. <laughs> you know, if you can edit them into a single composition, then that's even better. If you can't do that and you've got to provide me like half a dozen or something, just go ahead and do that. That's okay. Make sense? Yeah. Cool. So here is the sequence that we're going to follow. This week is just about getting comfortable and kind of judging how much early um, information you guys are going to need. Next week is going to be about seriously looking at the fundamental drawing techniques we need in order to do anything correctly in this course. Mostly it's about drawing 3D primitives and being able to comfortably turn them on the page. A lot of this course will be that initially because if you can't do that, you can't build more complicated shapes on top of that. Okay, Then we're going to look at the three major masses which are the most obvious pieces of the body. You could probably name them just by guessing, but three major masses and basic bodily proportions. And by the way, there are as many different systems for human proportions as there are artists. There's no right one. Um, we're just going to look at a few and that's just kind of get the general idea. And they change based on age, gender, sometimes race, sometimes nationality. So there's no standard to go by anyway. Then foreshortening and wrapping lines as we're looking in drawing the torso and limbs in more detail. The Loomis head will hit in week five, which is a way to 
take a ball and turn it into a recognizable mannequin head and also turn it in any angle. That one is kind of tricky and it's important because it's kind of the cornerstone of drawing faces and heads correctly. But also more to the point, it's sort of an easy example of what we're going to do with the rest of the body, which is take a basic figure and then put some other shape on top of it, such as a muscle shape in a back or a bicep shape on an arm. If we can do the Loomis head, then we can do it with all of those different um, body muscle and skeletal shapes. Uh, week six, we'll look at head structure after doing a lot of Loomis heads because um, the Loomis head doesn't have eye sockets, it doesn't have a nose, um, it doesn't have ears, it's just a mannequin head. And so head structure will include all of those things that we um, left out without getting into the things like facial expression and a particular person. This will just be about adding like eye sockets, skeletal shape, um, position of nose, mouth, and eyes, that sort of thing. Uh, seven, skeletal landmarks. One of the most important things we're going to learn in this course is that in order to judge what position the body is in, you need to look at skeletal landmarks because they are the reliable part on the surface that you can say, oh, that's which direction that's pointing. An example of that would be if you take your hand and just below your neck on your chest, there's a little notch where your chest begins and your neck ends, the suprasternal notch. That is a reliable position. It doesn't slide around because someone is fat. It doesn't change position because you are flexing a muscle. It's always there because your rib cage is there, because your collarbone and your shoulder girdle is there. So we use that as an indication of something to tell us how far back the body is leaning or how much twist is in the upper body. And there are many others. You can probably guess what some of them are going to be, uh, but some of them are going to be parts of the body you never really thought about before, just that you can clearly see them when the, when the entire frame is flexing and moving. Um, at that week, we're also going to start talking about line of action, which is how you apply that, and the robo bean, which is just a more strict version of the basic torso. Then finally, in week eight, we're going to get into actual anatomy um, in small parts of the body one at a time. Uh, in eight, we'll start with the neck and shoulders because it's right near the head and the uh, torso, which is basically where we're starting out. Uh, we're going to have the anatomy of the lower torso and pelvis, so that's like abdominal muscles, um, lower torso, pelvis, anything that attaches and stabilizes toward the bottom, maybe obliques, we'll see. Um, the back is a pretty large area, and so we've got all of the upper and lower and sometimes side muscles in the back. Um, I'm trying to sneak in also some fundamental figure drawing concepts like contrapposto in this week. Then in week 11, the lower back and sides, that's the butt, and the butt has many different uh, muscle groups that combine to make that shape. So we're going to study that and make sure that we can get a good uh, fundamental base on which we can build not only the upper body, but the legs. Then we're going to go down to legs, upper and lower. Then we're going to go down to the feet. Then all the way back up to the hands, then the arms. Actually, I may have done that. Oh, those are backwards. Sorry, arms first. Let me swap those. Arms first, then hands. That's the way that it makes sense. And then finally, the face and skull. So I did leave a little bit of room here to talk about facial expression, um, the, uh, the morphology of the face as far as like race, gender, and age are concerned because it does change quite a bit. Um, and facial expressions are lots of fun, but they're very difficult without you know a solid grounding. So that's our basic kind of process that we're going to go through in this class. Some of the things that I've left out that I wish I could include are like costume and caricature. Um, I really wish we could include that, but we have so little time. Uh, animals, I love uh, animal anat anatomy, and I've taken and also taught comparative anatomy, uh, anatomy between um, quadrupeds and biped animals and human beings. It's really fascinating, especially where birds are concerned. Um, we don't really have time for it, but I wish we could cover that. And then also the more fun kind of like animation style of drawing, which is my favorite, of drawing poses that move one after another and are more gestural. So we do have to kind of focus on the more academic side of things here, but that doesn't mean that I'm not open to discuss and demonstrate some of that sometimes. It's just not in the curriculum, that's all. Okay. Is there a, a class like next 
transporter that would go over something like that or similar to that? Not everything I just mentioned. There, I, I'm actually teaching right now anatomy, which is Art 40A and B, but nobody signed up for B as far as I'm aware. And B would be the time when you've taken this class once, you've got the basics under your belt, and now you want more practice and to put specific things into your process, like caricature or creatures or something. That's what 40B would be for. Um, let me see, what, what we got a question here? I'm still working out the kinks with the press to talk. Yeah, switch the setting. Yeah, that's fine. Is 40B open? Yeah, I believe it's open, but there was like nobody in it at all. And if you're taking A, I don't think you're eligible for B. If you've got someone else in mind, then they could probably take it. Okay, I'll assume that was the end of that question. Uh, any other questions I've missed somewhere in the chat? I can tell my, uh, yeah. I, uh, I'm currently waitlisted for, uh, for this class. But, yeah. But I don't think I can access Canvas until like, actually at the class. Everything really important is in these links that I've provided here if you need the exact uh, the exact articles that we're looking through, then I can post them up in Discord chat as well. But I, I can't add anybody until I have either drops or people that I know for sure are inactive. I don't know why, but the limit for this class is ridiculously small. It's like 18 compared to the normal 30 people. I don't, I don't really know why they did that, but I could add like one or two people, but I can't add as many people as I currently have on the wait list. So We've got to wait at least a week. Um, you're free to stay and participate. And if you are able to add late, none of your work will be late. We'll just add it into the pile. Um, and if you need those links, then I'll just provide them in Discord chat. Just remind me to do that. OK, thank you. OK. Any other questions for now? Any crippling fears? Oh, god, he's mentioning three-dimensional drawing shit, shit, shit. <laughs> That's it? Just yes? <gasps> do you need do you need help or advice or No? I I do have one other resource. Let me let me grab this one because I like it. Where is it? Oh it was on oh yeah, it's right there. Drawbox. Drawbox is a good site as well. Let me copy that. I'm gonna put that in your class channel because it's a really good site. Drawbox is kind of about um, just barely starting to draw at all and this guy kind of guides people through that process but what he talks about initially are some fundamental drawing techniques that we'll use a lot like for instance his lesson for constructing whatever it is he's called it construction to insects and arachnids he's drawing like these sausages that have wrapping lines around them this is a really good thing to practice because it's kind of how all of the limbs are and kind of how all the torsos are. They're just kind of this, you know, two eggs or two boxes or a sausage or a bean, and you have to know which direction things are wrapping three-dimensionally. And then if it wasn't so fat, they would also kind of look like all the limbs. All the limbs are just kind of tubes. So I'd recommend that if you've never heard of it before, just looking at the lessons on Drawbox and familiarizing yourself with what he's talking about, because that's kind of fundamental to what we'll be learning. But like I said, I can do lectures and recordings on that sort of thing. Do you need your real name on Discord? No, but I won't know who you are unless you nickname yourself what your real name is. If you don't care, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. I will only know who you are if you use your name. Otherwise, I'll know you as like this guy over here, Bam Jeep. That guy's Bam Jeep. My good student, Bam Jeep. And his friend, Chives365. And Ghostly Nova. Ah, Ghostly Nova. Who could forget him? Yeah. Cool. 
Does his head look like just a big version of his icon? Because that would be cool. Oh yeah, it is Andrew. Okay, yeah, you've I, you pierced the veil. Now I know who he is. Too late. <laughs> okay. Uh, are there any questions at all about any of this stuff? You guys want to see stuff that I've done in the past? I think I may have linked it at some point, but I have a Tumblr I never use anymore, and it has a bunch of my drawings on it, so we can go look at that. Yes. Here we go. I was just recently refamiliarizing myself with the stuff I'm about to teach you. So there's a bunch of recent things. Also, my shoulder hurt when I started doing this. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, let's see. Did I practice Loomis heads on here recently? Let's find out. Mm, no, but I did do draw three-dimensional figures. This is an example of what I'm talking about drawing three-dimensionally. If you can do this, you're completely good. If you can't do this, I'm going to show you how because you need to know how in order to draw the figure properly. The easiest one, I think, is the cylinder, maybe the box. But the hardest one, although it doesn't seem like it, is the sphere. Because if you just draw a sphere without wrapping lines and axes, it looks the same no matter what direction you draw it. Okay, that's easy, but it's also useless. Okay, so to draw a sphere which can rotate in the right direction three-dimensionally and aim itself, that's pretty hard and it takes all of the things that you learn from the box and the cylinder to do. Uh, if you can draw a dice tumbling through space on a, on a sheet of paper, you're probably good. That's probably all you need to be able to do. That said, we rarely use boxes except for a few anatomical pieces. We'll more likely use cylinders for most of it. Uh, boxes are useful for like the pelvis maybe parts of the skull and the and the rib cage. I guess the wrists and fingers sometimes, but cylinders tend to lend themselves a little bit better to anatomical drawing. Then here's a bunch of random crap. Drew these for my wife for a desktop, some aggressive raccoons, just painting some stuff. Let's go way back and see. What do I have? I used to draw every single day something and upload it here just for self-discipline. I stopped doing it a couple years ago, but it was fun to do. Um, this was a painting I did for some students for their class project. There was a 3D object that I textured. Here's Abraham Lincoln as a dinosaur. Why not? Here's Kermit getting dressed up, putting on some makeup because he wants to feel pretty. I don't know. If you can't, yeah. If you can't tell, I like cartooning. Uh, I have a background in animation. I went to school for 3D animation in, in particular, learned how to draw and caricature and cartoon and love it and still like to do it. Although most of my um, teaching is in 3D modeling and game development. So I like cartooning, but I don't get to do it very much. So it's fun to do that sort of thing here. Um, here's maybe one of the only relevant, relevant examples. Actually, this one will do too. Um, there's a drawing of Neil Gaiman that I did just one day, and it kind of uses the fundamentals that you're going to learn about Loomis heads and three-dimensional structure, a little bit. Uh, here's a bunch of dwarf heads, more caricatured really than anatomical. Let's see what else we got. Oh, ice cream trucks and aliens. I believe that I have a selection of better drawings, because this is just everything day by day. There's a goat, there's a cat, there's a couch potato, ha ha. There's Ren and Stimpy. There's some monster in a trash can and an onion with a face and Plucky Duck from Tiny Toons and a koi and a toaster truck and yeah, whole bunch of random crap. But it's fun to do random crap. Um, sometimes, oh, this guy's my absolute favorite, so I, I must show him. I will paint him someday. When I, when I master an oil painting style sufficient for his nobility, I will paint him someday. So regal. So regal, that's what I thought. Yes. Um, sometimes I get from students uh, questions about style. And so this right here was a demonstration on how to do a, um, a comic book ink style. And I've got a little step-by-step -step thing that I followed and then the final result up there. So every now and then, something like that. I like to look at it. I found I hate doing it, <laughs> but it is fun to do. 
Um, here's a kind of example of what you can do, at least with cartooning and anatomy. These three guys kind of look like ruffians, and they're in very, very caricatured stylistic poses. But I'm also using anatomy here, here and there, to emphasize what it is I'm trying to say. Like for instance, the fact that this guy's sticking his butt in the air and you can kind of see the two cheeks of his butt. Or the fact that this guy leaning on the wall has his arm and his neck at kind of a right angle here. I have to solve that with this cartoon character without making it look ridiculous and stupid, which is really hard to do if you don't know fundamental anatomy. Then of course this last guy who's pointing directly at you, and we can see the different overlapping shapes of the bulging muscles on his foreshortened arm. That stuff in cartooning is best used sparingly, but you can't use it sparingly if you can't do the, the thing fundamentally in the first place. So it's kind of a good reason to learn anatomy, even if you don't like anatomy very much. And really when I was going through school, I didn't like anatomy very much. It wasn't my favorite subject, but it has such utility and usefulness that you just have to learn it, you know, regardless. Uh, here's a, my little brother was playing some D&D uh, &D character. He wanted him to be stupid and muscular and also a wizard. And so I drew him and he named him Mogo and I gave him like a jersey on his shirt. So there you go. Um... Oh, let's look at, um, I said that I might have actual carefully chosen drawings. Yeah, here we go. So these would be like um, a selection of ones that I like the most. So some animated things like this one, which I think was for a flash glass way back. Uh, this one, which I sometimes use in an avatar, a couple paintings here and there. This was a playbill for one of my friends was uh, doing her thesis project in theater and needed a playbill for that and then just various other paintings and designs and things when you get into if you're planning on getting into concept design or production design this is the kind of thing you end up doing a lot of the time which is that this cat is going in a 3d environment and he was going to be animated and rigged and everything and we needed his proportions and design so that the modeler the rigor, the animators could use that to make him look as good as possible in the actual 3D environment. So that's something you do for concept design quite a lot. Oh, did I lose it? I lost it. Let's go back up there again. Yeah, so, okay. There's just a little bit of sharing stuff. Any questions? Comments, panic attacks. Oh, here we go. Here's a more anatomical one. Let's see. Uh, so I did that because my wife wanted more authors on our wall. I painted this, framed it, put it on the wall, and distressed a little cheap frame so that it looked antique. And then here is the process that I used to design that looking at pictures of Mark Twain, experimenting with sketches, finding one I liked, constructing it better, and then painting it through. So, there you go. Here's a caricature of some YouTubers that I like. Here is a little sketch that has a little bit of anatomy and not really though. <laughs> this one has more. So yeah, this is my kind of thing. It's okay if it's not your kind of thing. Uh, you can like whatever you want to like. Uh, here is, what, what's his name? The the hand from Adam's family? Uh, thing. thing. Oh, I could have just read my own note, couldn't I? Um, thing from Adam's family. I actually animated things scurrying along inside of the house just for fun. And it is very difficult to draw a hand emoting if you don't know how to construct three dimensionally. And so it turned out to be a really excellent exercise to see if I could use um, the construction techniques that I know to make it look like he was like shaking hands with that little spider. Um, really difficult to do. Yeah, there we go. All right. That's all I have for today. I just want to make sure you guys are all comfortable using the technology. You know what the class is going to be about and what's going to be expected. So if you have no questions, that's all I really prepared for today. What I can do, though, is demonstrate some stuff in Krita or in Photoshop. 
so that we get our feet solidly planted on the ground. What do you guys think? I have a question. Is there any software that you recommend that we should download for the class that's like high, more suggested? I have right here in module one, uh, drawing programs and hardware recommendations all written out in a big long article. Um, the short version is I use Photoshop because the school uses Photoshop and I've used it for years. And I use Krita because it's free and excellent for drawing and painting. So that's the short version. If you, if you want a free program that's excellent, as in better than Photoshop for drawing and painting, Krita. Uh, if you want a very simple program that's super easy to use and still excellent for drawing and painting, Psy, Paint Tool Psy, 50 bucks, but it's the easiest, simplest program I've ever used. Um, there's also Fire Alpaca Art Rage, which is way too expensive. Don't use that one. GIMP, which says that you can draw and paint, but I don't believe them. And Procreate if you are a Mac user. Cool. Other questions? Yeah. I would recommend that you try to just draw and paint as much as you can, but there's no reason to completely like reject those tools. I mean, they're there for a reason. It depends on what you're going to use them for. If you see in an early stage of your drawing that you clearly did something the wrong size and you can just resize it, just resize it, you know? If you have a reference in your drawing program, and you have your drawing and you've been drawing next to it. I love to do this. Take the movement tool and overlap them. Look at it and see how different yours is and then separate them and keep working on it. That's a really good use of the technology. So what I will say is there, there are a few things that are poisonous to learning how to draw that digital tools provide you. One of them is the straight line tool. I would recommend you not ever use the straight line tool because now your hand has learned nothing ever, right? The straight line tool makes perfect straight lines. Hooray, but now you can't draw one. You know, don't you wanna be able to draw a nice straight line? All of those are free-handed that I just did. Every single one of them, okay? Want a few more? Boom, 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 boom. Straight line, straight line, straight line. I'm doing that with my hand. I didn't need to pick another tool. Are they less straight than the straight line tool? Yeah, yeah, they are. Who cares? <laughs> you know, I have hand skill that I can rely on as opposed to a digital tool. If you were drawing, for instance, like I'm gonna at some point have you guys drawing like Loomis heads. I should probably get this Sailor Moon thing off of here and just make a new fresh. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting get out. It's right there. It's fine. It's right there. I'm gonna draw on this though. So at some point. I'm going to tell you guys to draw um, Loomis heads, right? And that means drawing a circle first. Okay, so some of you might be panicking already, going, oh no, drawing a circle, right? How circular is my circle? Eh, it's close enough, right? Do I get it wrong sometimes? Yeah, this one's a little squishy. This one, yeah, it's fine. Maybe a little boxy. You only need a kind of okay circle. Okay, this one wandered a whole bunch. Maybe I should take a second crack at that one, right? They're never gonna be as perfect as this tool, right? There's a circle, there's a circle, there's a circle. But you know what? That circle's ugly. <laughs> I prefer the hand-drawn ones, especially since every other stroke in the entire thing that you're gonna do is gonna be hand-drawn. So if I take one of these perfect circles and then start to try to add anatomy to it, it's kind of weird that I have like this perfect uniform line and then my sketchy hand-drawn lines like right next to it, it's kind of strange. And why shouldn't you just draw the circle anyway? You know, if you can do it, if you can't do it, okay, I get why you don't want to draw the circle, but no time like the present to learn. Don't run away from your weaknesses, you know, learn to draw a circle. Ugh, ugh. I'm gonna make this circle as bad as possible. There we go. Now this, this circle is lumpy. This circle is angular. This circle is flat on parts of it. Ah! But you know what it was? It was good practice. And now I'll do another one. And maybe it'll be slightly better and maybe it won't. And I'll do a hundred of them. Oh. Oh. 
And I'm doing this in front of people too. You guys realize that. Like I'm live streaming this in front of you and fucking up circles and I'm supposed to be your teacher. Okay? Don't worry about your ego. Don't worry about, you know, your pride. Don't worry about like doing things wrong sometimes. Ooh, you, right? Just get over it. You're practicing for you. At the end of a class, you don't have to show your artistry to anybody. You don't have to share it if you don't want to. But really, art's there to be shared. You know, it's more fun if you do. You get to say something. You get to convince people of things if you share it. You really should share it. So don't worry if it looks bad, right? That's just your practice. Practice is good, okay? When you mess up, it's good practice. Cool? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't remember why I started ranting about that. Somebody help me and ask a question. I, I did an exercise like that before, mm -hmm. um, and it, it was to make these weird circles and then bring them together and then make it into something else. Just like look at it and say, "Hey, I can turn that into something." Like that could be a big giant pot. I okay. I think you're talking about like if I did this sort of thing. And then did like a Rorschach test on myself? No, it was um, make circles. Because you can. Connect the circles together and then make it into something. Uh, but the idea is that you don't know what you're drawing and then it ends up being something. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of the same thing as that. Like if I do what you're, what you're saying, like here's one, here's one, here's one, there's one, there's one. And then I say, oh, it's, it's I don't know, someone's head or something. I got to need another pencil, darker pencil. It's a, is it? Okay. Yes, it is. Yeah. So he's got like, here's his little face and his big old pouty lips. And then he's doing like, like that. He's like winking and he's got, I don't know, his little, little bird wings like that. That's what you had in mind. Perfect. And he's holding up a cell phone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. That's cool. Or we we could do it with this thing, possibly. I see some horrifying fat like marshmallow man guy, like screaming and falling, for some reason. Just like I see in my dreams every night. Oh my god. Yeah. There we go. I I saw that for some reason. Yeah, those things are cool. I mean, I don't know what their point is except that they're fun. They are fun. Um, maybe to just kind of shake you up a little bit. Hmm. But they're cool. All right, anybody got questions about like some of the stuff that I was mentioning that you're going to have to know or practice that you might be super nervous about? Uh, uh, Loomis, Andrew Loomis. Andrew Loomis. We are going to approach that later on in the quarter, but let me Google that. Andrew Loomis. Uh, that's his book. These are examples of his figure drawing. He was like an early 20th century um, artist. That's an example of what a Loomis head is. So let's do Andrew Loomis head. This kind of thing. Now this doesn't look very helpful. I'm going to explain it in a way that makes a lot more sense. But it's like this sort of thing and it really helps. Uh, you will see artists doing this sort of thing all the time uh, because it is probably the easiest way to draw the head from different angles. I have a uh, curated version of this that has simpler instructions and also of course I'm going to demonstrate the instructions. But the basic idea is take a ball, shave off a two-thirds tall slice from either side, and then add a big wedge that makes the jaw. That's kind of the idea. And the key to it is just you first need to be able to position a sphere rotated correctly and then to find all the other measurements. So here someone is practicing it and getting okay results, but the features are all very flat because they haven't done that part yet. Um, here's another sort of reference in which he's got all the planes of the face instead. Here's one in a giant cube. Yeah, so it's that kind of thing. That it, does that answer your question? Yes. Or do you want to see me do it? <laughs> it's, it it's not super important yet, but here's here's the start, right? So we start with a ball, 
and then I'll ask you which direction should the person be looking? Left, right, up, down, which direction should they look? Okay, so they're going to look to the left. Should they look to left and up? To left and down? Left and up, okay. How much? A lot or a little? A little. A little, okay. So a lot is easier because it's like somewhere over there. A little is harder, right? So this is the center point of that sphere, right? And we're going to try to make it a three-dimensional sphere. And so I'm going to try to make it so that we're looking to the left and we're looking up, but we're only doing it a little bit. So there's going to be like this kind of through line that's going to go through. I'm trying not to rotate my screen. Is it annoying if I rotate my, let's see. Where's my, where's my rotate tool? Oh God, Krita, don't do that. Uh, there we go. Is that annoying if I rotate this or is that okay? It's fine. It's fine? Okay. So there's going to be like a through line that goes here, right? That's kind of like the meridian line of this thing. Oh, I drew it wrong. <laughs> that's what, that's what I get this way. Okay. So that's like the line that we're going to follow. And so if we kind of like chopped this, the ball in half and it was like perfectly perpendicular to us, this would be the top and bottom hemisphere. But there's more to it than that. And also I'm going to try to make sure that the front of it is somewhere close to the middle, but not exactly. So we'll put it like here. Okay. I also didn't ask how much should this be rotating? Should the person be leaning their head away from us? Or should the person be leaning their head towards us? Or do you care? Uh, maybe towards. Towards? Okay. So we'll do that. So the reason I asked that is because if you don't care, this first line is the direction that they're looking exactly. And it's also the um, primary halfway point of this ball. But because you said that, it should be rotating towards. There's this little hidden disk that we couldn't see here that I need to make fatter like this. And this side of it is the front. And it's come this way because we're leaning the head that way. Okay, So I've got this wrapping line now, like that. And this part of it is the front of the ball. Oh, sorry. Now we rotate back up. I'm kind of messing myself up a little in the head from rotating so much. But see now, that has taken what was here, right in the center of our eye, and it's moved it down the surface. So now that ball is kind of tipped downward. And if I do this more and more and more, eventually we're just looking at the other side of the ball. Okay. So I want this to be looking over here somewhat, but you did say up. Hmm. Have I messed up? I might have messed up, right? Because now it's like, well, where did this point go? I was supposed to be looking up. Now this point would sit right here. And that doesn't make any sense. Now he's looking down, right? So maybe actually I have to rotate this way because of what your decision was, right? Because now, look at that. He is looking up and to the left, not down. You see what I'm saying? So it's all kind of tricky and interconnected, right? It's that we've got decisions to make and sometimes we try to make them. Sometimes they conflict, sometimes they don't. But we'll just say that here, if I rotate again, draw that a little bit better. Wrapping line, there we go. Here is that front line of the ball. And we've got this other axis. This would be like the top of the head. And this is the front. And so I want to make a second kind of wrapping line here. And this is kind of the front plane of that ball if I draw it just right. There we go. So here's the front plane of the ball. So now we've got the perfect center and the point that it crosses outside of it. And pew, there goes like an arrow out the front of his face. Okay. It is a lot more exaggerated than you asked for. You said just a little bit and I made him look way, way up. But them's the breaks. Okay. So that's the at least the first couple steps of like the Loomis head is get this ball oriented the way that makes sense based on the pose that you see. Cool? Cool. Cool. And then you chop off the sides and find the third lines and stuff like that. That tends to chop off the sides. Let's see, where's this other side? So that means this would come like there, this would come like there. Then I always mess up the third lines. It's like the hairline is up here somewhere. And then this one lines up down there. And then you extend it down one more and you get the chin. And I actually have to read the instructions to remember because I'm always doing caricatured stuff. We extend a box straight down the side of the face. And his chin hits uh, somewhere. 
let's just say there, has to line up with the perspective of the front plane, which is going like this. And halfway, get a mouth there somewhere, connect the jaw straight up the side of the side plane, connect the jaw. So we basically got them, but rush straight through that last bit because I don't remember exactly all the instructions. I gotta look it up again. There you go. Kind of like that. Don't worry, when it's time to lecture it, I'll make sure that I know it better than that. Cool? Cool. Anybody else questions about things that you are worried about or maybe don't know what the heck I'm talking about or just like to see a demonstration for no good reason at all? While I give this guy a tether and an astronaut costume. Okay. Well, I was asking for anybody else if they. Sounds like no. You guys just like watching me draw a shitty astronaut. <laughs> yeah. I always like watching people draw. It's fun. All right. Well, if that's it, then we can stop today right there. Um, one note for scheduling is that at 8 o'clock, my son goes to sleep, and usually I'm the person that reads him stories at night. So I will typically want to stop at 8 o'clock, but if you guys need more questions answered that day, I'm back in less than half an hour because it doesn't take that long to read him stories. And at that point, I can do more demonstrations or um, answer questions or something. Really, I don't think it's going to be a big deal because a lot of our information is online anyway. Uh, but if you absolutely need to, then we can do that. Cool. Is that it, you guys? Are you guys good for now? Feel pretty confident looking through all of that information on Canvas and starting to work on this stuff? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Then on Thursday, what I'm going to do is give you guys a primer on drawing three-dimensionally and also a little bit of advice at just drawing at all because it it might be condescending I hope it's not but sometimes people have really bad habits drawing like making little tiny sketchy lines with their fingertips and not using their arm to draw and I want to make sure I cover all those bases because you can give yourself repetitive stress injuries and you can also make life a living hell when you're trying to draw a nice big sphere and you try to draw it like this gonna make it I think I can I think I can I think I can I think I can okay now just 40 minutes of erasing and redrawing and I'll be there right I don't want you guys suffering through that so <laughs> you feel you feel like <laughs> this is about you it's a personal attack <laughs> well well think about this I know about this I must be guilty too Uh oh I've implicated myself yeah I mean, we all do bad things we need reminding, but I want to make sure I cover those bases so that we're starting out on the right foot. And also, when I yell at you later, then I feel justified about it. <laughs> cool. All right, you guys. Well, thank you very much. I'm going to let you guys go. If you want to stay behind just a little bit and ask me any more questions, then that's fine. But if not, then I will upload this. I've been recording it. It will go on YouTube, as will all of our um, lectures that I record. And yeah. That's it. I will see you on Thursday, probably. Thank you very much. All right, you guys. Take it easy. Bye-bye.